Masks are coming off at DIA. I'm not wearing a mask at all. The TSA is no longer enforcing the federal mask mandate. If you want to play that game, you know, go ahead, but I'm going to keep the mask on. We're breaking down the changes and what the White House plans to do next. Colorado lawmakers are tackling the growing threat of wildfires, the bills that could help fire departments and people who need to rebuild. So we're not really able to meet the demands that we're seeing. More red flag warnings go into effect today across Colorado as temperatures near 80 degrees. Plus, the Nuggets are winless in their playoff series against the Warriors. Now they need to rebound as the series comes to Denver. The thing that jumps out to me after two games is their inability to sustain playing at a high level. And we want to get to some breaking news right now. At 11, charges against Barry Morphew have been dismissed. He was supposed to go to trial next week for killing his wife, Suzanne. But a judge just accepted the prosecution's motion to dismiss the charges less than a half hour ago. A little background here. Suzanne Morphy disappeared in Chafee County nearly two years ago on Mother's Day. Her body has never been found. Prosecutors say that investigators are close to finding her body, pinpointing an area, but that search can't be done right now because of weather and snowpack conditions. Also during a separate court hearing this month, the judge ruled the DA's office failed to disclose information to the defense. For that, the court excluded 11 out of 16 expert witnesses that the DA was planning to call to testify. Now, right now, Barry Morphew's attorney is giving a press conference. Uh, we did clip a little bit of what she said just a few minutes ago. Take a listen. We were going to get Mr. Morphew acquitted rightly after a trial that we believed we were going to have to have. But all of a sudden now today, in the face of the fact that they have committed so much misconduct, they decided to dismiss the case claiming that there is a body that they're close to finding up in the mountains that, it, that are snow covered by uh, nearby where Mr. Morphew's house was. We have not seen any indication in any of the discovery that we've been given, which has been terabytes and terabytes of information. And prosecutors filed a motion without prejudice, meaning they can refile charges at a later date. We'll have much more on this developing story throughout the day, starting on the Denver 7 News app at 4 p.m. And more breaking news right now. You might see some smoke in the Denver area. Air Tracker 7 is flying over a fire near 46th and Tennyson. You can see heavy smoke over the area. Denver Fire says firefighters got everyone out of that building safely and there are no injuries. But again, you might see some smoke. For the first time in more than two years, you don't need a mask at DIA. A judge struck down the Biden administration's mandate less than 24 hours ago. Airlines and some rideshare companies have already started dropping mask requirements. The sudden change in rules is leading to some confusion about when you need a mask or where. It's a story we've been following all morning. Denver 7's Christian Lopez joins us from DIA, where it was quite a different scene among passengers there this morning, Christian. Yeah, Nicole, it looks a lot different this morning and people that we've talked to have mixed feelings about the whole thing. So some are choosing to keep the mask on. Others are taking it off. A federal judge in Florida got rid of the mask mandate yesterday. She said the CDC exceeded its legal authority in issuing the order in the first place. And she was actually ruling on a case that goes back to last summer when two people from Florida sued, saying that the mask mandate increased their anxiety. But all major airlines, including Denver-based Frontier, dropped the requirements yesterday. They're tough issues. There's political considerations that the federal government is trying to deal with. And then local cities, I think, are concerned about their population and keeping everyone safe. I think people are just trying to do the best they can. It's exasperating to get through DIA anyway um, and, and to catch your breath at this altitude. So it's nice to not have that mask covering your face and you can catch your breath. The CDC, though, is still recommending that people use face coverings when they travel. Meanwhile, the airport is asking you to at least carry a mask with you because the policy could vary depending on the airline or the destination. Live at the airport this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Yeah, not a good idea to throw those masks out just yet. Thanks, Christian. Also, right now, new at 11, Uber and Lyft have announced they are dropping the mask requirement. Masks will now be optional for passengers on the rideshare services. Uber says anyone who feels uncomfortable can cancel their trip.
You will still need a mask on RTD. The agency is meeting today to discuss the mandate. Right now, they say it will fo they'll follow the mask requirement on buses and trains until further notice. There are some questions right now about the, what, what the White House will do after the ruling was struck down. The Biden administration says a court ruling is currently under review. The DOJ can request an emergency order to keep the mandate in place if the White House appeals the decision. This is obviously a disappointing decision. The CDC are reviewing the decision, and of course the Department of Justice uh, would make any determinations about litigation. Yeah, and the CDC issued the mandate for public health reasons. It's unclear how the judge's ruling could impact mask mandates in the future if there's another surge or another pandemic. It can be hard to keep track of the various changes with masks. If you're confused about where you still need one, go to the denverchannel.com or download the free Denver 7 Plus app to your streaming device. The company charged with making sure the Aurora Police Department complies with an improvement plan is holding a public town hall tonight. It starts at 730 at the Aurora Municipal Center. It will also be live streamed online. And the first marijuana dispensary under Denver's social equity program opened its doors today. Dan Morgan is the owner of Social Cannabis near 50th and Federal. He says he realized he wanted to open a marijuana shop last year. He was the first social equity applicant approved to be eligible for the city's program, a business owner must have a prior marijuana conviction or be a member of a community once targeted by the war on drugs. Morgan was eligible because he got a marijuana possession charge when he was 21 years old in Wyoming. If this program didn't exist. The only way to get a license would be either, you know, apply against companies with unlimited resources um, or buy another license which would have cost millions and millions of dollars that I just don't have. Morgan says he's starting a mentorship program to help others who are interested in opening their own dispensaries. Civic Center Park, meanwhile, is getting ready for the Mile High 420 Fest. It returns to the park tomorrow for the first time since 2019. The festival calls itself the largest free 420 event in the world. Streets near the Capitol will be closed for the marijuana-themed festival. Gates open at noon tomorrow. Colorado Senator Michael Bennett is in Boulder County today. He'll get a look at the debris removal process following the Marshall Fire. Bennett will be joined by officials from Louisville, Superior, and Boulder County. And the county has told us that tree removal has started in some of the areas damaged by the fire. Heavy equipment will come later this week to start removing metal, ash, and concrete. A new bill in our state legislature introduced by the Senate president would provide tens of millions of dollars for rebuilding after wildfires. It would also create an office to consider long-term disaster preparedness. It would provide money to residents, businesses, and governments that were underinsured as well. The bill is retroactive as well, meaning if it passes, people affected by the Marshall Fire would be able to apply for the funding. But if they do want to rebuild and we want to make it so that they can stay in their community if they'd like to, we also want to make sure they're rebuilding in a way that's climate smart so that if and when another disaster like this happens, that they're actually building in a more resilient way. And two bipartisan bills would help fire departments across Colorado. One would give $5 million for better equipment and more training. A second would give departments more funding and behavioral health resources for volunteer firefighters. While Colorado leaders prepare for more fires, there is some good news about our snowpack. So far, it's doing better this time or right now than it was this time last year. In a really good year, levels are above 100%. Right now, we're at about 70 to 100% of normal peak levels. Snow and wildfires are connected. When there's less snow on the ground, there's a higher chance that a fire could burn. Things like the air quality or recreation opportunities um, the snowpack helps dictate what kind of fire season is likely or um, things of, of, of that nature. So, yeah, it's, it's a big deal in Colorado. Since the snowpack and fire danger go hand in hand, it's a good reminder to protect your home, especially if you live near the mountains. Any fuels that could burn in a fire should be kept somewhere between 5 up to 30 feet away from your home. 
Denver wants to double recycling and composting over the next five years. Under a new master plan, the city would divert half of its solid waste away from landfills and into recycling or composting. That would increase to 70 percent by the year 2032. The city says the plan will reduce greenhouse gas emissions equivalent to taking 600,000 cars off the road. The plan also includes ways to minimize waste and educating the public about a more sustainable future. Cars line the road to El Dorado Canyon State Park, and that has some neighbors fed up. Still ahead, they're worried all the traffic will lead to trouble, including wildfires. And a popular spot in Colorado is now requiring reservations. 